Hey fellow photographer, how's it going? I'm Michael Selbel. Today I would like to share with you how to make holiday photos that really rock. I'm talking about underwater portraits in a swimming pool and I would like to share with you my first underwater shooting ever and uh, I will go into the details of the settings and share six important tips that enable you to do the same. We had two models, two women that we have uh, met on holiday in the hotel and they are wearing big dresses, a white wedding dress and a nice red dress and I'm basically photographing them from the bottom of the pool upwards. So when you do something like that, let's um, let me give you a word of caution first. Care about the safety of your models. Have somebody next to the pool watching the models closely and just in case it looks like one of your models uh, is caught up, has her feet caught or your hands caught in the dress, then this person should jump in and help the model to get to the surface. I don't want to hear that somebody uh, watched this video, did a photo shoot and then the model died because uh, she couldn't get to the surface. Yeah, alrighty. With that out of the way, let's get to tip number one. This is about the camera housing. If you want to take your DSLR or your mirrorless camera underwater, you need a housing, but you don't have to invest into a special housing for your camera because these are really expensive. I used a housing which is called Evermarine UBXP. That this, is, this is basically a flexible plastic bag, but the build quality is really, really awesome. The camera is safe in this thing. It fits the speed light on top of the camera. Um, one disadvantage for me is that I cannot attach a flash cable to trigger an external flash. This is a pity. And that brings us to tip number two. You need light underwater, otherwise your model will be too dark. So you should have a flash and I would prefer an off camera flash somewhere at the side, but I cannot trigger it underwater. Radio waves, they don't travel underwater. Optical transmission doesn't work when the sun is shining into the pool. Yeah, so I do what I seldomly do, I use on camera flash. And uh, this also plays into tip number three. You want to get close to your subject, so you should use a wide angle lens. Because the more water is between my lens and the subject, the less image quality will, I will get. Use a wide angle lens and make sure um, the diameter of your lens is fitting to your underwater camera housing. Talking about the housing, let's get to tip number four. Make your camera floating. You know, with such a camera housing, you can add weights to the housing, which will pull the camera a little bit down. So it's basically floating in the pool and that makes it much easier to handle the camera. You know, with my Evermarine UBXP housing, I can blow in some air, then it's getting more drift upwards or I can let out some air and I attached some weights to the bottom. So that made handling the camera much easier. Tip number five, use silica pads inside this housing to suck up condensation. Yeah, you have this uh, housing with your camera in the cold water of your swimming pool and then the next moment it is outside in the hot sun and the humidity is really high. You don't want condensation water to get into your lens and uh, your camera. So add some silica pads to the whole thing so uh, condensation is really taken care of. Lastly, tip number six, wear some diving gear. I, I didn't need a diving suit or, or oxygen tanks or something for this photo shoot. That wasn't necessary. But I found that wearing a diving belt with some weight really helped me sinking easily to the bottom of the pool. So I borrowed this belt from uh, somebody who was working at the hotel and, and who happened to have such a belt and it really helped. I also needed a diving mask to see something, otherwise I wouldn't see anything. With the mask, I could even look through the viewfinder, that was good, but I also used the LCD display. I just um, I just dialed the brightness of the LCD display up to the maximum in order to see something underwater. So let's talk about my camera settings. 
most important, I had my aperture on f11 to give my autofocus a chance of getting everything sharp and crisp because underwater the autofocus can have some issues. It might hunt around. That's also why I only use the middle autofocus point and I always pointed it to some contrasty area so that it uh, had a chance to grab the focus. My shutter speed was on a 200th of a second because that syncs nicely with the on-camera flash and I used ISO 100 all the time for all the photos. I had my camera switch to auto white balance. You could also use daylight white balance. Just don't expect that the white balance is 100% correct because the spectrum underwater is different. Yeah, red light is falling off faster than blue light, for example. So it's not 100% correct, but it's good enough. What I did in Lightroom was boosting the clarity and vibrance to the extreme. So all the photos you see in this videos are raw files with vibrance and clarity boosted to the maximum because otherwise underwater photos would look too dull for me. If you would like to discuss about details or if you would like a daily photo tip, then how about you join my free Facebook group, which is called Tips for Photographers. Now, I will post a link to that somewhere below this video. With that said, I wish you a lot of fun for your underwater shoot and for your other photo shoots. And like always, good light.